I'm Lizzie, a kitchen witch, and these are anti-anxiety lavender donuts. On low heat, pour one cup of oat milk into a small saucepan with one tablespoon of lavender. Steep for just a few minutes. Grab a large mixing bowl and soften one half cup of butter. Then drizzle in one half cup of vegetable oil a little bit at a time, mixing as you go. Then three quarters of a cup sugar. Then mix it up until it's well combined. Then pour in one half cup of the lavender infused oat milk. You could strain it if you like to, but I don't. One and one half teaspoon of vanilla extract. Two whole eggs and mix until very well combined. One and three quarters cup flour. One and a half teaspoons baking powder. One half teaspoon baking soda and a pinch of salt. Mix it up and ladle the batter into a piping bag. Fill up the donut pan about halfway and bake at 375 degrees for 15 minutes. Come back to see how I made the icing and follow for more kitchen witchery. Suhoud is the pre-dawn meal before fasting. Here are my high protein strawberry banana overnight oats, perfect before a fast. Start out with oats, vanilla protein powder, almond milk, vanilla Greek yogurt, bananas, strawberries, chocolate chips are optional and some more almond milk. Shake, put it in the fridge overnight, and follow me for more, please. Grocery store sold out of microwavable pancakes, so now I have to meal prep my kids' breakfast because I don't do mornings. Let's go. Flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt in a bowl. Add some sugar. Mix it up, then add melted butter and milk. Flash vanilla. My flowers are dead. I will need some eggs. Mix it up. Pour your batter into a grease mini muffin tin. Make it 350 for about 14 minutes. Now you got mini pancake muffins. Great for dipping in syrup. You gotta try this. Do the thing. Oh, yeah. Magic cinnamon sticks from 63. So this recipe finds a good use for ready-made pie crust mix. But of course you could use any leftover pie pastry you have or make your own if you enjoy that type of low-level anxiety. One pie crust mix. And this one needs five tablespoons of cold water. You gotta mix it with your fingies. Done! Roll this into a thin rectangle. Now we sprinkle some coarse sugar on both sides, pressing it in with your rolling pin. I like sugar. Get in! Now into three tablespoons of melted butter goes six teaspoons of cinnamon mix. And then on it goes. This is very satisfying. I like you. Fold this in half and cut into strips. They're so cute. Now twist and onto a baking sheet. We bake these at 350 for about 20 minutes. Oh, yes. Oh, I like a cookie. Mm. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I'm going to eat all of these. It's blackberry season at the cottage, so I made a blackberry mousse. In a pan, I combined two cups of blackberries with one cup of sugar. I poured one cup of cream over the top and then mixed and mashed the blackberries in. At this point, you can put it on the hob at a medium heat until it steams, but don't boil it. When it steams, take it off the hob and leave for 30 minutes. I took half a sachet of veggie gel and mix with two tablespoons of water. After the half hour, I put the blackberries back on the hob, waited for it to steam and mixed it all together. I then poured it through a sieve to remove all the blackberries and pressed all the blackberries down to add extra flavor. I poured them out into four containers and left them in the fridge for a minimum of four hours. It's such a nice treat to cook with the berries from my own garden. 
Two ingredient easy dinners you can make when you just need a few days until payday. Each of these meals costs just $2.50 to feed two people and can easily be doubled or tripled to fit your family size. First we have a bag of instant mashed potatoes and a can of beef stew. I'm using the four cheese potatoes but I would have liked to use buttery homestyle if they had that one in stock. This one can also be made entirely in the microwave. I microwave the beef stew for two minutes during halfway through and I cover it with a plate to stop it from splattering in the microwave. I also mix the potatoes with two cups of hot water per the package instructions. I split my potatoes evenly between two bowls and I made a well in the center for the beef stew which I also split between the two bowls. Now I know this one may not be much to look at but it is rich and hearty. You've got filling potatoes, beef, and vegetables all in like a gravy type of sauce and I actually really like this beef stew from Dollar Tree. Next we have cheesy jalapeno mac and cheese and a packet of ranch flavored tuna. I just boiled the pasta according to the package instructions but before draining I removed a half a cup of the pasta cooking water to make the cheese sauce. I added the cheese sauce packet, the pasta cooking water, and the packet of ranch flavored tuna and stirred those all together. I actually tried this one a couple of months ago when I was doing the microwave meals and I thought it was a really good combination. I just didn't upload the video at that time so this is my backtracking on that but you can make this entirely in the microwave. I just will say that the jalapeno mac and cheese is a little bit on the spicy side so if you don't like spicy feel free to just use regular mac and cheese. And lastly a bag of Noor chicken rice and a can of chicken a la king or any canned soup that has chicken and vegetables in it. I added my packet of chicken rice into a pot along with my can of chicken a la king and four cups of water. I'm essentially making a chicken and rice soup here and four cups of water was a bit too much so I would say three to three and a half cups would be perfect. I brought this up to a boil and then I simmered it for 15 minutes until the rice and pasta was done cooking. This was an experimental dish but I was actually kind of onto something here because this tasted almost identical to those little packets of Lipton noodle soup that I used to get as a kid when I was sick except for it had big chunks of chicken in it so it was a little bit more hearty than just the little packet of noodle soup mix. And so this was definitely like a under the weather kind of meal. I could definitely see myself making this if I was ever sick and just needed something warm and filling. I'd love some other suggestions for some two ingredient dinners I can share in a future video. Let's cook like a Chinese chef with my dad, featuring egg drop soup, also known as egg flour soup. First, we'll build the foundation of the soup. Bring a pot of water to a boil, and while we're waiting, crack some eggs into a bowl. Beat the eggs for about 20 seconds, and when the soup is boiling again, add chopped carrots, corn, and peas. While that's cooking, combine cornstarch and water in another bowl to create a slurry. Ensure the heat's turned down to low, then gradually pour in the cornstarch slurry while stirring the soup constantly. The next step is to create the flours. It's crucial we do this slowly to prevent clumping. Similar to the previous step, gradually pour in the eggs while stirring the soup constantly. Now turn the heat off to preserve the softness of the eggs and to avoid overcooking the soup. Add salt and chicken bouillon as well as white pepper and sesame oil to your liking. Distribute the flavors by giving it a quick stir before serving the soup with some chopped green onion as garnish. Listen, the idea of worms does not encourage me to eat. It doesn't stimulate my appetite, but apparently worms are a special interest for some of you. Pairing thinking about worms with food would make you feel more positively toward eating. You told me that, I believe you. So we're gonna do this thing. This is my worm meal. I started by baking brownies around lunchtime so they'd be cool and ready to work with by dinner. It made some nice rich dirt for my gummy worms to move into. Obviously I had a compost salad. Not sure what to say about this, seems self-evident. My main was brown rice paired with some spiced up ground beef. It had a whole lot of garlic and onion and other flavors in it. I tossed them together and then I introduced some hot dog worms into this delightful soil mixture I've made. Honestly, this meal works surprisingly well. I hope I've made someone out there very happy. See you next meal. This is episode five of my Foods From Film series. Today we are making the cake from Kiki's Delivery Service, another Gilby Studio classic. I didn't want this cake to be a basic chocolate cake. I wanted it to be more grown up, to represent the growth Kiki goes through after moving to a new town. So I present to you Kiki's Mocha Cake. First, we're gonna make the most decadent chocolate cake layers by simply combining the wet and dry ingredients. 
Then divide the batter between three cake tins and bake it at 180 degrees Celsius. Since the cake layers have a stronger chocolate flavor, we're gonna cover it in some delicious mocha buttercream that has a stronger coffee flavor. In between each layer, I'm adding a generous amount of buttercream and some chocolate chunks to give it that crunch. Smooth out the crumb coat and place it in the fridge to chill. Lastly, let's make a ganache by combining double cream, coffee, and chocolate. Then pour it over the cake and just watch it drizzle down. Finally, decorate the top with some marzipan or fondant cutouts of Kiki, Kiki's name, and a tree. Let's make tomato feel-good soup. I have been feeling very sick these past few weeks, and I did get a diagnosis, which is wonderful, and I got some medicine. But I decided that some tomato soup would be just what I needed to perk myself up. I also decided to use this both as spell work with the intent of healing and as an offering to Brigid. I used all of the tomatoes that we had as well as various herbs that correspond with healing, such as bay leaf, basil, crushed red pepper, white pepper, oregano, and salt. I used vegetable broth and oat milk, but you can use any substitute that you like. I stirred counterclockwise to banish illness and clockwise to bring in health. Paired with the grilled cheese, this soup was wonderful. Brigid also seemed to really like it too. Good day, I'm Bob the Necromancer, and today we're doing an unboxing. 